Hello guys, I guess most of you have been waiting for this moment for so long I had to apologize because I couldn't complete the Budapest file because of some special requests. As you know, on the channel you get a possibility to order the videos you want and we can publish them out. Uh, so right now we're just about to conclude the Budapest Gambit against the fourth most common and probably most successful move for white bishop f4. In this lecture, I'm going to give you like three interesting possibilities for uh, black. I'll give you one for rapid, uh, sorry, for blitz and bullet games. I'll give you one for rapid games and I'll give you one for tournament uh, options. So basically I'll have like three alternatives um, a good thing is that I also had some practice lately uh, in these variations with black pieces just because of you. I just wanted to try it out by myself and to see how does it work in practice. And my experiences are pretty well. Uh, I mainly managed to win my games, although sometimes it, it was because of good opening prep. Uh, so I used the lines I'm about to show you. Sometimes it was just because I was trickier and uh, pretty skilled in blitz. Anyways, let's get started. So, how do we reach this position? As you know, d4, knight f6, c4, e5, d takes knight g4, and bishop f4. Uh, in previous three videos, I showed you in the first two how to play against the sidelines, in the last one how to play against very common knight f3, but let's see what happens with this bishop f4, because why doesn't want to commit his, himself with a knight f3 so early? So there are three moves. The main line is knight c6, and it is going to be a subject of our analysis in most part of this lesson. Um, apart from knight c6, you can also play g5. So knight c6 will be for tournament and rapid games. g5 can be used for blitz and rapid games. And finally, uh, I have a specialty for a blitz and bullet games. It's bishop d4. So let's get started with this one. In my opinion, it's highly worth of trying in faster time controls, such as bullet and blitz, but it's quite risky for even rapid chess, and not to mention serious time controls. So my suggestion, go with bishop d4 in faster, but really faster time controls. After bishop b4, they, they all play knight d2. In case of knight c3, you just play knight c6 and you have a, uh, one of the transpositions into the main line. After knight d2, boom, second other pawn. Uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, they have to take. If they play like a3, you just take on e5 and you get a good game. It's considered in theory to be even slightly better for black. So they have to take on e6. White takes the challenge, and here you go with this interesting third pawn sack. So you play queen f6. Look what's happening. You're threatening this bishop. You don't care about the c7 pawn. You threaten uh, Iwan Chile, uh, this pawn on f2, and this position already looks uh, quite interesting for, for black. Uh, although, objectively, uh, there is a way for white if he knows the line, and I believe most of players won't know the line. Uh, so if they know the line, they're just uh, better, easily better. If they don't know the line, you can, uh, you know, like end up winning m like most of your games. But just like I told you, do it in faster time controls. So if you're queen f6, you're threatening bishop on f4, eventually pawn on f2, but you also threaten pawn on b2. Quite interesting. They can't take on c7. Simply, it would be it would be bad because of queen takes f4. So they have to play either e3 or knight g3, uh, knight h3. If if they play bishop g3, you just take on d6 and you use uh, old good deflection idea because they can't take on d6 since you're gonna make them on f2. So uh, basically, after knight g on f3. You just take on g3, where you break the pawn, um, uh, pawn structure. You once again take on b2, and I gotta be honest and to tell you that in this type of position, I can only prefer black. White ends up 
with double pawns, with broken pawns, and according to all basic like uh, rules of chess, black at least has to be slightly better. I'll be honest with you and uh, give you like an engine assessment. It's unclear, but if you ask me, uh, I wouldn't mind to play this with black. So they can play bishop g3. So what happens if they don't play bishop g3, but they play knight h3? On knight h3, uh, what I faced like so many times in the past, you have a very nice move, knight takes f2. A uh, very interesting move that makes this variation even crazier. Uh, and that's why I actually uh, like it so much. Uh, they have to take by king. Taking by knight is not going to bring them anything good because you take on f4, you end up with the bishop pair. And you know what? I'm always wondering if they take like this, should I take on c7 by queen or keep developing my pieces? I would always keep developing my pieces and play in compensation. When they play like king takes f2, we just take on h3, and all of a sudden, bishop on f4, all together with this king on f2, they're hanging. They can take on h3 because you take on uh, f4 and uh, they're almost in checkmate. If king g1, I believe bishop c5 is checkmate. If they play like king e1, you have queen h4 checkmate. So they have to play king g2. Worst case scenario uh, should be that you have perpetual check. But I believe after this check, they have to play king to f3. Whoever has to play like this is just playing with a fire, so I would play and go with knight c6 and go after this king, and I guess the mate should be inevitable here. That's why after bishop takes h3, they have to play g3 to defend this bishop on f4, and at the same time to threaten our bishop on h3. You go with bishop c5, you absolutely don't care about material here, so initiative is all we care about. After like bishop c5 check, they have to go with e3 and you play bishop f5. With the queen on f6, with both of these bishops uh, being placed in the center and heading the king on f2, um, okay, I believe that th this should be considered at least playable for black. Check it out, you now threaten g5 because the king is uh, very uh, unwell placed on f2, just like the bishop on f4. I'll show you a game of uh, two FIDE masters played in Chicago back to 2008, where white played knight to f3. Only move is d takes c7. It's tempting because he takes another pawn, but it's nothing too special. Black should be going with knight c6 and get a good game because g5 is still a threat. Although, uh, I'll show you a game between these two fms. This guy played knight f3. And black captured by pawn on d6. Uh, what's so special about capturing by pawn? Well, you keep your bishop on c5 strong, keep hitting both of these, like pawn on e3 and king on f2. You also want to include your knight c6 afterwards, uh, and you at some point want to play h6 and g5. At the same time, you threaten pawn on d2. So when the guy played queen e2, played h6 to play g5 to win the piece. After h4, which turns out to be the only move, played castle. This guy played bishop h3, exchange, played rook to d1. Put a rook on e8, put a rook on e4, uh, double up these rooks on the e file, and after this, played queen e6. If you ask me, this is positionally lost for white. Possibly weak pawn on c4, extremely weak, um, isolated pawn on e3. A possibility to maybe even trap this bishop on f6 with some f6 and g5. But be very cautious about that because why would you weaken your king? Maybe it's way better to play just knight f6, knight g4 and go after the pawn on e3. Uh, black managed to win this game very easily. That's why they have to play d takes c7. You play knight c6, they go knight f3 to stop g5, of course, and you go with rook c8. Uh, going with rook c8 is good in terms of removing the bishop from f4 and capturing eventually this pawn on c7. After like queen b3 castles, I need to stop here and to tell you that this could be worth trying 
Uh, I'm not saying once again that this is like the best variation in the world for black, but still it's really, really like uh, interesting for you uh, to, to, to use in some faster time controls. And let's take a look at the objectively best variation. After, once again, I'll, go, I'll give you all these moves. So after bishop f4, uh, I'm suggesting you to use this bishop e4. So when they play knight e2, to go with d6. After they take, go with queen f6. Most logical, and not too uh, like hard, is e3. You just go with g5. Um, you can also play, please don't take on d6, because I took once on d6, and the guy played bishop e2, and I was already lost. I managed to win this uh, blood game against Grandmaster on chess.com like two months ago, but it's not something I should brag, uh, brag around. So, uh, in case of queen b2, it's nothing, knight g on f3, bishop d6, you have terrible pawn structure, at least you're not having like uh, any material disadvantage. Uh, but basically, uh, this is better for white because of better pawn structure. That's why practically only move is g5. They have to play bishop g3 and you play h5. h5 with the idea h4. As long as we play these crazy moves, this variation really works well. You gotta, or at least it looks uh, like more than tempting at first glance. They have to play h4. I'll show you a game of mine. I played in let's just call it serious blitz tournament uh, in my city in November 2019. The guy who's rated around 2200 in blitz played h3. I played h4, which is the best move. He captured on g4, I took on g3. He took on h1 and played knight g on f3. I took on g4, uh, he took on c7, and after queen b3, I took on f2. At this point, um, and up to this point, actually, we played everything according to the analysis. And in my analysis, I wrote down that I should be fine in this type of game. When I say fine, I'm not worse. Uh, keep in mind that I'm black and that I'm playing highly suspicious variations just to surprise my opponent. Uh, he went with a3, which once again is the best move, and I kept the bishop pair with bishop d6, and I was lost that game. I managed to win somehow. Uh, I, sh I should have taken a d2. I didn't want to give up the bishop pair, as you know, I like bishop so much. And I, I, I was supposed to take on c7. According to the engines, since they have a broken pawn structure, a bit weaker king on f2 than our on e8, this is position with compensation for black. And finally, uh, if they take on c7, we just play knight c6 as usual, and uh, they have to play h4. And in my opinion, absolutely the best is to play h4 immediately. We take, they take. We take on b2, threatening bishop takes d2, followed by queen takes a1. They have to play knight g on f3, and you have, once again, this crazy bishop f5. I analyzed also knight e5, since they, they can't take because you take on d2 and the a1 is hanging. But this one doesn't seem to be working because of the only move works c1. Also knight e5 could be worth of considering in one game. So after bishop f5, why bishop f5? In order to stop rook b1. And d takes e7, knight e6, bishop e2, rook c8, castles, and rook c7. Uh, I'm not saying once again that you're not worth here. Objectively, you are. Uh, it's even much better for white, but uh, let me just do one experiment with you. Uh, I've never done this so much. Um, so, actually, I've never done it so far. Uh, I'm going to flip up the board and to give you this position. You have to admit that when we flip up the board like this, and when you take the white pieces, king looks kind of weak. You can't play rook to b1. Queen is on the back rank. Uh, and somehow he can always go with some craziness like, such as rook g8, bishop c5, rook d7 and get some sort of like counter chances that's why i told you don't play this in tournament chess because your opponents will have enough time to defend and to find the best uh, games but try it out in faster time controls hope you like this suggestion and hope you've never seen this uh, so far let's go now with serious stuff and let's flip up the board 
So after bishop f4, let's go with favorite move of one of the best uh, world GMs, Shak Mamajarov. It's early g5. I had a privilege of playing against this Croatian once in my life in Algeria back to 2015. I won my game in like 20 moves. I was white, but it was because my opponent made a, a severe blunder. This g5 uh, could be used even in some tournament games if you prepare yourself well. So what's the point? You gotta kick this bishop away. You also uh, want to uh, get like better control of uh, e5 in case they go bishop c1 or whatever. You just take on e5, play bishop g7 and play a normal game. Uh, but they have to go with me and to put the bishop back on g3. You play bishop g7, they go knight f3. You want to get this pawn on e5 at all costs. Good players uh, can play h4 here. And uh, h4 was one of my favorite moves <coughs> at this point. The line goes like knight takes e5, you threaten pawn on c4, and uh, I don't want to show you the rest of this line. This is just my suggestion for you that uh, black has very complicated game, which ba basically could be a good intention by all black players, because when you have an unclear game, when you have a crazy game with black pieces, you don't have much to lose. Well, your opponent with white pieces is supposed to play solid, reliable, uh, usually positions with small and tiny advantages. Uh, so that's why they usually play knight c3. You take on e5, take on e5, and play h4. I'll show you a game between uh, Edouard Roman, uh, one of the top French players against Tigran Garamian. Uh, and this guy played e3. Very logical move. Roman, uh, Garamian played d6, bishop e2, bishop e6. And here, I have two games to show you. Uh, so, Edouard Roman against Garamian, and uh, one game uh, played in Spain. Uh, Victor Maskalenko was black, a famous French player, but at the same time, just like you see, he's even good in Budapest Gambit. So, this guy played f4, Maskalenko captured, and took on c4. Point was that the, this was a clear blunder. He couldn't, uh, he couldn't play... Um, queen a4 because of queen d7 actually that happened in the game took by king and after f5 I guess he blundered uh, this bishop whole combination and that bishop has d5 he was up opponent eventually won the game very easily that's why after bishop e2 bishop e6 uh, Roman went with a rook c1 castles b3 solidify his game and Garamian played f5 threatening to push this pawn up to f4 and trap this bishop on g3. After f4, played knight g4. He now threatened the pawn on e3, bishop g4 f takes, castles and h5. Once again, I'm not saying this is one of those uh, best type of games uh, for black, uh, but it's, it really, really looks good uh, as far as I'm concerned. So after bishop f4, queen g6, rook f7, Played h4 with both ideas, with h3 and g3. Went on c5 with c6 and d5. Played bishop f5. Installed this bishop into the center of the board with the bishop pair. Possibility to weaken light squares. To double up his rooks on the file. Um, queen on g6 that was supporting bishop on e4. Black was really doing a lot better. And uh, just because of this, uh, after knight takes c5, instead of that logical move a3, only good players, I don't want to say top players, but most of uh, good players and um, pretty well theoretically prepared guys, they'll go with h4. So what's the point of h4? They just want to break this pawn, they want to push this pawn, uh, sometimes they want to take, sometimes they want to uh, push it to h6. So after like um, h4, we just played g4. And uh, I'll show you a famous game in this system, played between Wojtaszek and Jobala back to 2014. I'm always happy uh, when I have to uh, show you a game of Jobala because he's one of the most creative players in the world and we all enjoy his crazy style. Uh, objectively, the best line here for white is h5, pushing this pawn up to h6, d6, h6, 
95 and you have to play castle. Uh, white is slightly better. That's so obvious because of this pawn on h6, possibly weak king on g8, but it's not like huge advantage. It's also uh, very important to not have that. And um, what I can tell you from my own experience, these positions looks way better at first glance for white than they really um, are in practice. Uh, so let me just show you the, that game between Vytashek and Jabal. Vytashek played a3, don't forget, Vytashek 2750, one of the top world GMs. d6, bishop e2, bishop e6, rook c1, castles, for the first time threatens really to take on c4, b3, and play c6. So uh, he's taking away d5 square for this knight, and I guess he just wants to play some queen e7, rook d8, or queen a8. Okay, queen e7 looks like. After h5, a logical move. He wants to push this pawn to h6 and to fight against bishop and g7. f5, h6, bishop f6. Uh, it was, it's very important to notice that here, white doesn't have what we previously analyzed, 95, and I usually like when white has a possibility of placing the knight into the center of the board. After queen d2, queen e7, f4. Jabava captured and put the king on a8. Why? Because he wanted to put his king into safety, but at the same time place this rook on g8. While the rook, while the rook uh, from uh, a8 is going to go on d8, supporting the pawn on e6. After f4, typical Jabava's move, rook a d8. I very much enjoy this sacrifice. Uh, I analyzed this game a couple of times and. This was one of the crucial moments of the game. I guess after f takes, uh, d takes, queen c2, Jabawa would go all in with f4, and uh, this really looks uh, very, very difficult for white, because in case you take, you're just lost after bishop h4, and in case uh, you just go back, uh, then we take, and when they go like this, bishop h4, it's, all, it's almost checkmate. So they, they would have to actually take and play like this, but you know what? Here you can play f3 and this king on e1 looks terrible and we get a fantastic initiative. Uh, that's why after e takes f4, uh, sorry, uh, after queen c2, Jabava played knight g4, Vaitasha captured, and once again, I believe, uh, he blundered this uh, fantastic tactical possibility. Point is that he can't move the bishop because g3 is hanging. If he takes on f5, takes on f5, queen a3, he has just fallen apart. And mate is coming. So after knight e2, rook g4, king f2, and d5. Rook d1, rook e8 goes after the e3 pawn. c5, bishop f7, threatens on e3, queen c1, queen e4, and Wojtaszek played knight d4 and resigned the game. Uh, fantastic game by Jabala, 27 moves only, and this was an impressive win uh, by Jabala here. So hope you enjoyed the game, and uh, I'm just going to remind you <coughs> once again of the fact that G5 was mostly played by Shak Mamajar with black pieces, and his results with this line are really, really good. And finally, let's go to the main line. You go knight C6. You want to get a pawn back on e5, they go knight f3, you give this check. Knight bd2. Uh, somebody told me, uh, didn't Yasser Seravan uh, refute this variation like a long time ago with the knight c3? And I have to tell you, um, yeah, there are like so many articles, uh, so many analyses, so many games by top players where they try to prove that after knight c3, you always take creating like... I have to say, this looks like a very weak pawn structure for white. Queen e7, queen d5, f6. You have to get a pawn back, so they have to take it. And right now you're down the pawn. But what do you have in return? You have like a game against this terrible pawn. Although, what does white have? White is up a pawn, and white has a bishop here. So these are like pretty serious things in terms of saying that he's got an advantage. So after like g3, castles, bishop g4, rook a to e8. Black looks good. And black really, really uh, should be happy 
uh, with this type of game. I played this uh, game numerous of times. All you have to do is play b6, play knight d7, knight e5, or play knight d7, knight e5, or play knight a5, or put that knight on e5. Somehow, I, I like this position for black. In probably a crucial a game for a desperation that was played in London back to 2013 in Candidates Tournament, Ivanchuk played against Aranyan, rook a1, played king a8, knight e4, knight e5, <coughs> sorry, and after a bishop e5, d takes e5, knight f5, he went into threatened that queen and played c6. Very interesting type of game. After rook d1, uh, knight b6. Ivanchuk's game here was pretty good <coughs> because he's got a good knight against a little bit. I don't want to say weak, this is pretty good bishop, but as long as we have the c6 pawn, and especially b7, the defense pawn on c6, it's a little bit bishop without an activity. So, uh, I believe that here, what was just slightly better, Aranyan eventually managed to win. Uh, although, uh, Ivanchuk's position looks pretty stable here. So, knight c3 is not a refutation of Budapest Gambit, but white is certainly slightly better. After a bishop before, knight bd2, queen e7, uh, I want to show you here a uh, line that is so popular for all these years, especially for guys in low levels. Uh, when they play a3, and most of people do that, even I play this a couple of times with white, knight g on e5. I remember we were kids and uh, two good guys met uh, them each other and this guy said ah, I want a piece and this guy played knight to d3 smarter checkmate so don't forget about this one and uh, after knight takes e5 once again knight takes e5 and once again for all of your reminder a takes before knight d3 checkmate if they play b bishop takes e5 you include bishop d2 and you get an equal position boring equal but with black pieces in 10 moves, what do you want more? And finally, in case they play a3, you just take on d2 and you go d6. I'd like to analyze this position with you. I was white and played against Fida Master from my city. The guy made mistake. Please don't ever make this mistake. And it's very common mistake, even by some GMs. Uh, I won like so many blitz games. You just do c5. c5 is a killer. c5 is a killer because you can't play d6 anymore, they'll take and create a weak pawn structure, b6 loses to queen d5, and if you take on c5, rook c1, and now if queen e7, rook c7, and if queen d6, you just have terrible pawn structure, I don't even want to analyze this one, uh, and they have a bishop pair advantage. So don't play castle, play d6. And if, So that's very um, important thing to uh, once again point out, and to loudly tell you, hey guys, the butcher is just warning you, otherwise, uh, please uh, don't, don't, don't even try uh, these variations and don't embarrass me so much. So after d6, bishop e2, once again, second important point, play b6. I once again tried this in practice and played castle. I was suffering, eventually I drew, uh, but I want to tell you what the point could be behind first b6 before a castle. It's important to do it now before we make short castle so we can launch an attack with h4 and h4 afterwards. So how does it work? After like a uh, castle, by the way, don't forget it, bishop e5, d takes, bishop f3, rook b8, you just have an equal uh, position. So after castles, you go with bishop b7. They go uh, before. Uh, it's so logical because they want to break these pawns. We've got an extremely, extremely solid pawn structure. But instead of before, they can play queen c3. I'll show you a game between uh, Fide Master and I am played in Brazil. This guy played knight g6. It's a very common idea to sack this pawn. And this guy didn't uh, grab the pawn but put the bishop back, uh, launching, launching the attack. That's the point of not having castle, so you can play h5 and h4. 
after f3, h4, bishop f2, h3, and f5. Black won this game fairly easy, but you have to admit that these weaknesses on the light squares are almost, um, you know, like deadly uh, for, for white. So when you play like knight g6 and they go queen takes g7, you play long castles, and I'll show you that even, um, you know, like considering the fact that they're up a pawn and bishop pair, they can't play these positions if you dynamically play these games well. So after queen h6, because we're threatening to take on f4 and to take on e2, uh, they, go, they go queen h6, you play rook g8. You want to take like the full activity and take advantage of the bishop and b7 and rook on g8. They have to go uh, bishop uh, f3 or bishop g4. Whoever goes bishop g5, f6, just kick that bishop away and uh, kill this guy on probably, I don't know, bishop h4, you just take on g2. Uh, or no, actually, you take on h4 and then you take on uh, g2. Uh, so they have to play bishop g4 check, king b8, and this happened in a game of mine. Play, a guy played bishop h3. Looks like I'm solidifying myself, defending g4, g2. You can take on f4 and lose. I'm going to lose the bishop here, but I'm going to keep keep the pawn up. I played rook f8, which is very interesting because I want to play f5. And my opponent... Uh, it was GM, uh, he, by the way, this was a five-minute game on ICC, so uh, I played Rook F8 to play F5. He didn't understand uh, how possibly my position could become dangerous. Played before, like, he wanna, uh, kills me with C5, because in these positions, if you manage to break these pawns with C5, you did, like, half of the job. I played F5, um, and I was waiting for him to do c5. Then I would get rid of this bishop, took on c5, and I would be at least equal, if not even a little bit more. He played rook f to d1. He's doing final preps for c5, and I did knight d5. For the first time, I am uh, possibly threatening something a little bit more concrete. Uh, rook g6, rook g8. So he played uh, nice. And cautious bishop g3. I played rook g6. He played queen to f4 because queen h4 doesn't seem to be working because of this and check and the bishop is falling. So played queen f4 and I played decisive move here, h5. Um, I'm saying decisive because I believe that right now if I push h4, uh, threatening the same trick with knight f3, if I install my knight on g4, uh, going with h4 afterwards or something else, I'm going to have like a great initiative. Eventually, I won this game in a great attack. So, I just gave you uh, this analysis and I hope that you like the system. So, uh, that's why they have to play b4, in my opinion. You play knight g6, chasing away this bishop, and after bishop g3, I promised you we just have to keep the tangent on the board. And this is the point of not having castles. Black easily and freely launches wing attack. So if they play h3, you play queen g5, threatening h4, to mate on g2, they gotta go queen d1, h5, bishop f3, I, we, we should take and play rook d8. If you ask me in position like this, only black could be better because of healthier pawn structure. Well, they have three pawn islands. Well, we have two. So after c5, we take on c5, h4, I'm showing you game between uh, Erwin Lamy, Grandmaster, and Swinkels, played in uh, Holland back to 2011, bishop e5, king f8, c6, bishop c8, bishop f4, and rook h5. Erwin Lamy lost this game with white pieces, he's a very strong GM, 26-20 uh, for more than the last 15 years, uh, although um, high rating didn't help me, didn't help him even against this weaker uh, guy than him. By the way, Swinkels is 2,500 player, but uh, Black did like lots of good things in this game, and Black already had a great position. Swinkels now made a mistake. He, he should have played Rook C5 and uh, went for, uh, actually, he should have gone for that C6 pawn, but still, position looks a lot better.
uh, threat of h3, threat of rook takes e6, of solidifying himself with bishop f5 or e6 and rook d8. Uh, but just like I told you, he eventually managed to win the game. Now let's take a look at the final position. So what did I assess as the main line? The main line assess knight f3, bishop b4, knight d2, queen e7, and instead of a3, to play e3. You take on e5, of course, they take and they play bishop e2. They want a complete development. We put the king in a safety. They do that as well. And here, people tend to play bishop d2 because for some reason they think that the bishop on b4 can find itself in danger. Don't worry about that. You just play d6. It's not in danger. If they play a3, you just take and play b6. Now, you don't have these possibilities with uh, typical h5 and wing attack, but now... When they play b4, you play rook d8, you play knight g6, and play f5. I also played games like this uh, with both the white and black, and after rook e1, c5, I have to say I would rather be black after rook f7, knight h4, and g5 than white. Even though they have a bishop pair, this is very promising type of game and hardly breakable by black, especially because they played c5 and prevented c5 by white. Most of players do knight b3. And looks like bishop is about to fall. They will win a bishop pair, break the pawn structure, and the rest should be easy. It's not like that. You just go with b6. And when they play like a3, you bring your bishop back to c5. So when they take on c5, you take by b pawn. You just want to have an open b5. After b4, bishop b7, I'm happy to put my knight back on d7 and control and defend the c5 pawn. Uh, after b takes, d takes, queen d2, bishop c6 to open the b file, queen a5 and rook b8. What I like about this position, let's, let me just uh, tell you what's like the objective assessment of the game. White is slightly and I'd say um, long term better. But on the other hand, if we play dynamically here, and that's what uh, black uh, does in this game with this bishop c6 and rook b8 uh, I believe that black can easily hold this type of game uh, that would be all about the Budapest Gambit hope you enjoyed and uh, guys I just have to remind you I do this for your own benefit so it wouldn't be bad if you can come up with some donations once in a while thank you so much and uh, enjoying the channel bye bye